Deepwater Horizon oil spill is much larger than thought. Government officials now say that oil is leaking from a well in the Gulf of Mexico at a rate five times that suggested by initial estimates. Rear Admiral Mary E. Landry of the Coast Guard said a scientist from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration had concluded that oil is leaking at the rate of at least 5,000 barrels a day, not 1,000, as had been estimated. While emphasizing that the estimates are rough, given that the leak is at 5,000 feet below the surface, Admiral Landry said the new estimate came from observations made in flights over the oil spill. An explosion and fire on a drilling rig on April 20th left 11 workers missing. The rig sank two days later, approximately 50 miles off the Louisiana coast. Doug Suttles, Chief Operating Officer for Exploration and Production for BP, said a new leak had been discovered as well. Officials had previously found two leaks in the riser. The 5,000 foot long pipe that connected the rig to the wellhead and is now detached and snaking along the seafloor. One leak was at the end of the riser and the other at a kink closer to its source, the wellhead. The new, far larger estimate of the leakage rate, he said, was within a range of estimates given the inexact science of determining the rate of a leak so far below the ocean's surface. So in other words, the oil spill is much bigger than previously thought. This is turning into a major catastrophe or disaster. Some say it could be even worse than the Exxon Valdez oil spill. Admiral Landry said President Obama had been notified. She also opened up the possibility that the government determines that BP, which is responsible for the cleanup, cannot handle the spill with the resources available in the private sector, that the Defense Department could become involved. Wind patterns may push the spill into the coast of Louisiana as soon as Friday night, officials said, prompting consideration of more urgent or extreme measures to protect coastal wildlife. Among them were using cannons to scare off birds and employing local shrimpers boats as makeshift oil skimmers in the shallows. Part of the oil slick was only 16 miles offshore and closing in on the Mississippi River Delta. The marshlands at the southeastern tip of Louisiana where the river empties into the ocean. Already 100,000 feet of protective booms have been laid down to protect the shoreline with 500,000 feet more standing by. On Wednesday evening cleanup crews began conducting what is called an in situ burn, a process that consists of corralling concentrated parts of the spill and a 500 foot long fireproof boom, moving it to another location and burning it. It has been tested effectively on other spills, but weather and ecological concerns can complicate the procedure because it produces a thick black smoke cloud that is toxic. Such burning also works only when oil is corralled to a certain thickness. Burns may not be effective for most of this spill, of which 97% is estimated to be an oil water mixture. A burn scheduled for 11 a.m. Wednesday was delayed. At 4.45 p.m. the first small portion of the spill was ignited. Walter Chapman, director of the Energy and Environmental Systems Institute at Rice University, 
said a 50% burn off for oil in the booms would be considered a success. Admiral Landry called the burn one tool in a toolkit to tackle the spill. Other tactics include using remote controlled vehicles to shut off the well at its source on the seafloor, an operation that has so far been unsuccessful, dropping domes over the leaks at the seafloor and routing the oil to the surface to be collected, an operation untested at such great depths that would take at least two to four more weeks, and drilling relief wells to stop up the gushing cavity with concrete, mud, or other heavy liquids, a solution that is months away. The array of strategies underscores the unusual nature of the leak. Pipelines have ruptured and tankers have leaked, but a well 5,000 feet below the water's surface poses huge new challenges. Reached in southern Louisiana on Wednesday, where he was visiting the response team's command center, Tony Hayward, the chief executive of BP, said he did not yet know what went wrong with the oil rig. BP, which was leasing the rig from Transocean, is responsible for the cleanup under federal law. The response team has tried in vain to engage a device called a blowout preventer, a stack of hydraulically activated valves at the top of the well that is designed to seal off the well in the event of a sudden pressure release, a possible cause for the explosion on the rig. There are a number of things that can go wrong with a blowout preventer, said Greg McCormick, director of the Petroleum Extension Service at the University of Texas, which provides training for the industry. The pressure of the oil coming from below might be so great that the valves cannot make an adequate seal. Or, in the case of a shear ram, which is designed to cut through the drill pipe itself and seal it off, it might have encountered a tool joint. The thicker, threaded area where two lengths of drilling pipe are joined. Still, Mr. McCormick said, something must be working there because you wouldn't have such a small flow of oil if the blowout preventer was completely inoperable, he said. The flow would be orders of magnitude even greater. An investigation into the cause continues. Officials, scientists, and those who make their living on the Gulf Coast were focused on the impending prospect of the oil's landfall. In other words, this oil spill couldn't have happened in a worse ecological or ecologically sensitive area. There are whales, dolphins, all kinds of manner of birds, blue tin, blue fin tuna, oysters, and shrimp. The cost of the disaster continues to rise and could easily top $1 billion. The cost for containing the spill are running at $6 million a day and climbing. The company said it will spend $100 million just to drill the relief well. And the Coast Guard has not yet reported its expenses. Yes, this is turning into a major ecological disaster. Luke chapter 21 35 For as a snare shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. 36 Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that are coming to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And these are more signs in the end times, transition days.